ಕರ್ಪೂರಗೌರಂ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಾರ ಭುಜಗೇಂದ್ರಹಾರ ಸದಾವಸಂತ ಹೃದಯ ಅರವಿಂದೆ ಭವಾನೀ ಸಹಿತ She has the microphone, yeah. Hello. Thank you very much uh, for a wonderful lecture and you definitely a very smart man. <laughs> uh, my question is… That's the worst um, insult anybody has yeah. thrown at me. He started by saying he doesn't know anything. <laughs> that was his whole… Uh, smart person. So my question is that you mentioned before that just belief without clarity is not a good thing. And I am absolutely impressed by amount of uh, volunteers, like a millions of the volunteers. I cannot even imagine how many people come for learning and not volunteering, so it's um, a lot. Do you think they are all driven by um, clarity and search for clarity? Or they believe uh, that when they will do in the engineering, they will work um, on the process of gaining joy and eventually they will have a positive story with you or the positive story as you mentioned before. Thank you. See, if uh, for any human being to do something, Either it should have worked for them or it should have worked for somebody around them. If you want to buy a car, either you will test drive it and see whether it works for you or you'll ask the opinion of your friend who is driving that particular car, is this been good for you, yes or no? So I must tell you, as a rule, for the first twenty, twenty-one years of my existence as a teacher, As a rule, I never appeared in the media, never once, <laughs> to a point where media started writing about me, he's running some kind of a secret school <laughs> because I refused to meet the media, no advertisement, no any kind of posters, not even a brochure, only by word of mouth, millions of people came <coughs> because once it works for somebody, They wanted to work for their family, their friends and things, that's how it happened. In the last fifteen years or sixteen years now, fifteen actually, from two thousand one is when you have heard about me all over because we're making a lot of noise in the last fifteen years. Because these projects which we started as small endeavors in the local area caught on so well and they became such major projects of planting trees, education, health. We are active in fifty-three thousand villages. So it needs enormous support, otherwise this can't be done. For a… An, a non-religious moment, which doesn't offer any miracles like this, never before, as I know in the last two hundred, three hundred years, never before, a spiritual movement has caught on this kind of following where no ticket to heaven, no miracles, no any kind of stuff, only thing I'm telling them is badgering them that you are the source of all your troubles. <laughs> Nobody else but you. But millions are gathering which is very <laughs> fantastic because I must tell you this, about thirty years ago, when I conducted programs, over eighty-five percent of the people came because of health reasons, physical, mental ailments. Today, on an average, only about twelve percent of the people are coming for health reasons. The rest are coming because they're seeking. They want to know, they want to experience, they want their lives to be touched in a deeper way than the way it is touched right now. 
This is a phenomenal change that you're seeing in the world, it's never before, I think. Only twelve percent are coming for health reasons, but at one time over eighty percent were coming for health reasons, which is a big shift. Any other question? Maybe someone from up, up, up above there. You right there in the front, can you shout your question out? Did anyone hear the question, are physical ailments, have, have you experienced physical ailments being helped by yoga? There are, we must understand, there are two kinds of ailments. In the yogic system, we look at health issues as two ways. One is caused by external organisms, which I think modern medicine has handled in a phenomenal way. In fact, the birth of modern medicine happened mainly because of the epidemics and pandemics which were happening at the time where it would wipe out populations. It is that which inspired people to experiment and do the things that they did. And when they found solutions, that is when suddenly the, the trust of the population shifted from one to another simply because they could eliminate epidemics. And these were caused by external organisms. But seventy percent of human ailments are on self-help. That is, they cause it to themselves in so many ways. For whatever reasons, knowingly, unknowingly, they do it to themselves. This seventy percent of ailments that people cause to themselves can be undone from within. But if you have an infection, you must go to the doctor. If you have pneumonia, you must immediately go to the doctor <laughs> Don't try to do yoga <laughs> Now, are there instances? We have thousands and thousands of people, I would say hundreds and thousands of people who walked out of their ailments without ever being treated for them. We don't treat people for yoga. I must tell you this because uh, we're in a medical institution. A bunch of doctors from United States came to our yoga center we were… we have a yogic hospital. So about twelve of them, largely from this uh, Michigan area, and they came and stayed for three days and uh, on the fourth day, they were very upset and they wanted to leave. I was very busy, I couldn't meet them and uh, somebody came and told me, Sadhguru, all these doctors are very upset, they want to go. I said, what happened? They're just very upset that there is no yogic hospital here. You told them there is yogic hospital, they think there is no yogic hospital. Then I said, okay, let me see them <laughs> Then I saw them. They were really upset, they were angry, they, were f they felt cheated that there is no yogic hospital here. Where are the patients? Where are the uniformed nurses and doctors walking up and down? I said, uh, see, at that time, on that day, maybe there were over seventy patients. But I said, I thought I'll put them to good use and I was making them work in the gardens <laughs> Nobody should ever understand sickness is a reward. <laughs> they must want to get out of it as quickly as possible. Right now we're treating patients in such a way people would want to be sick whenever they want attention, not just that. One important part of the yogic treatment is what is called as bhuta shuddhi. This means sinking and purifying the elements within you. Water, earth, water, air, fire and space. These five dimensions you can work on. This is the fundamentals of yoga. So one of the most important thing is, I want them barefoot with open hands to work in the garden, to just get in touch with the earth, be outside. Get in touch with the air, water, earth. Half the ailments are gone. Treatment is there a little bit. Rest is all just connection with the world around. Because this is a composite of all these things. You remove yourself and keep yourself in a completely alien atmosphere where you're not in touch. You're four inches above the ground all the time. <laughs> you will lose con contact with 
What makes your life? It's the very soil which you're carrying as your body. Is it not important that it needs to be touched with its origins? No, you're looking up. No, your life happens from this planet. There are other dimensions to it, of course, but physical health and the physical nature around you are very closely related. If you don't connect them, health is an accident for most people. Today I see America probably has the highest incidence of allergies. Is that so? Am I right? Very high. This is mainly because they are removed from everything that's natural. They are not in touch with anything that is natural, everything is tampered with. Those who are living in the open, even in America, I'm sure they have no allergy, they have no issue of any kind, they're doing fine. I think the homeless people are the most healthy people in the end. <laughs> they're enduring all kinds of, you know, variations in weather and still managing pretty well without health care. We probably have time for one more question. Uh, in the back, right there, shout it out. How to look for internal peace? How to? How to look for internal peace? Whoa, whoa, you just came in? <laughs> Hi. I'm sorry, was that, was that internal peace or eternal peace? Internal. Internal peace. Okay. Now, <laughs> we, we've gone through this anyway. Whether it's peace or happiness or joy or love or whatever, it can only be internal, it can't be external. Now, there are many ways to address this, but one simple way is just this. You just have to learn where the keyboard is for this big computer of your mind. Right now, you don't know where the keyboard is, you're punching it somehow. Something works? No. If you know where the keyboard is, you would type out the right things, isn't it? Fundamentally, it's just that your mind is not taking instructions from you. Don't ask for peace. Don't ask for joy. Don't ask for love. Just you have to understand the mechanics of how this body and this mind works. And then you cause whatever you want. If you like turmoil, cause it. If you want love, cause it. If you want hate, cause it, that's up to you. But I trust you that if you are capable of causing pleasantness or unpleasantness within you, you will choose the highest form of pleasantness for yourself. I trust you on that one. Now that, uh, you know, it started with this fifty-four percent of doctors suffering, which is unfortunate. Doctors, all said and done, are rendering a very key aspect of service to any given society. It's very important that they are well. I... I would like to make this offering that the doctors who are interested in this, we would like to offer them the tools of inner engineering so that they go out as truly healthy, joyful, life which is full of vitality, that their very presence is an inspiration for health for everybody who comes in touch with them. This must happen. Otherwise, what are we talking about health? We're talking medicine. Medicine is a business. Health is an aspiration for every human being. If this fundamental aspiration is not fulfilled, you cannot lead a human being to any other aspiration. Right now, there is some trouble in your body. I will talk about enlightenment. Are you interested, I'm asking? No, your back is aching. I will talk enlightenment, you're not interested. Will my back ache go? That's the only question, isn't it? Because body has this power. Unless you keep your body in such a way that you don't know whether it is here or not, this is what yoga means, that your body becomes like breeze. If you sit here, you don't know whether your body is here or not. Otherwise, if you sit here for one and a half hours, your body says, I must go to the bathroom, your body says, I must drink, your body says, I must do something. 
because it is in a state of compulsive needs. If you bring it to ease on all levels, you will not know whether body is here or not. If you are in such a state, you are not even conscious whether it's here or not. You have no gender issues, you don't care whether you are a man or a woman right now. Yes? It should not matter, I'm saying. There are only two places where your gender should matter, bathrooms and bedrooms. <laughs> Nowhere else. And some people even debate that, right? Which you go to which bathroom, it doesn't matter which bathroom, so just, just the bedroom. <laughs> Everything is under debate <laughs> But I'm saying, to move the body from compulsive needs to a place where it is like a stepping stone, not an impediment for your life. Right now the compulsiveness of the body is making people do all kinds of things in the world. People are not able to ra raise to a place where they can do something other then the compulsive things that every other creature does simply because they have not kept their body as it should be kept. This body can be upgraded to a place where it will function like an antenna which will download the cosmos. Even if that doesn't happen to you right now, the physicians of the world, at least they must become an embodiment of health and vitality. This must happen. Whatever is needed from our end, we're willing to do for Ail and you, sir, do little. Thank you so much. And I am Doctor Do Nothing. <laughs>